Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we have calculated the energy content in one cubic meter of atmosphere on the surface of Venus, we now want to try to calculate the heat content in a column of atmosphere all the way from the surface to the very top of the atmosphere. So we take one square meter of area and we work that all the way up to the very top. How much energy is contained within a column of atmosphere like that? And to do that, we're going to section it off in five kilometer sections. So we're going to calculate the energy content between zero and five kilometers, between five and 10, uh, 10 and 15, and so forth. Because for each of those layers, we're going to calculate the average, or we already have, calculated the average pressure in atmospheres, the average temperature, and the specific heat for that particular region. Now, it turns out that we use, again, the gas constant, uh, not the gas constant, but the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. If we now multiply both sides by C sub V divided by R, that's the, that's the specific heat of the gas divided by the gas constant, if we do that the same to both sides, then on the left side, we end up with an uh, expression where we calculate the specific heat, the pressure, and the volume, and divide by the ideal gas constant, and that will equal the energy content within a cubic meter of, of atmosphere. And of course, we do that for each of the layers, and then we have to multiply the result of that by 5,000 because there's 5,000 meters in a five kilometer section or a five kilometer column. So here we have all the average pressures for each of the five kilometer regions. We have the temperature and we have the specific heat. Now when we do the calculation, so we take the specific heat, we multiply that times the pressure. Of course, we have to multiply the number of atmospheres by 101,300 pascals for each atmosphere. We multiply that times the volume, which is one cubic meter, and we divide that by the gas constant, which is 8.315. So as an example, for the top portion, we take the, um, the specific heat, which is 150. We multiply that times the pressure, which is 77, times 101,300, that's newtons per square meter. We multiply that times the volume, which is one cubic meter. We divide that by the gas constant, 8.315. And then we take that result and we multiply that times 5,000, because there's 5,000 meters in five kilometers. And that will then give us the first result. So the heat content in the atmosphere for the first 5,000 meters, the first five kilometers, for a column that has a cross-sectional area of one square meter, is 704 billion joules. That's a lot of joules, that's a lot of energy. We do, we, get, we do it again for the next five kilometers, so in that case we use 70 instead of 150. The pressure here would be 56, still the same value for each atmosphere, one cubic meter, we divide by the same constant times 5,000, and now we reach 239 billion joules. So we keep doing that for the next five kilometers, 110 billion, 70 billion, 44 billion, 26 billion, 15, 8, 5, and 3. So when we add up all those sections, five kilometer sections, 10 of them, all the way up to 50 kilometers, the heat content is 1224 billion joules. Now these are of course approximate values, they're not extremely accurate, but it's a good estimate. And then, presuming that the next 50 kilometers, where the atmosphere score is much thinner, a much lower temperature and all that, we can then assume that we probably can add another 26 billion joules, just kind of a number, round number, so that it adds up to one and a quarter trillion joules of energy within a single column of atmosphere on Venus, a column that has a cross-section area of one square meter. Over a trillion joules of energy. That's an enormous amount of energy. Now we have to multiply that over the entire surface of Venus, and we'll get the total heat content in the entire atmosphere of Venus. So that will be done on the next video.